and today we're going to be learning about mass and weight. It's a very interesting subject because, actually, it's... Come in! Hello everybody, Hello. I'm Bob, your new bus driver. The bus is ready. Everybody, come on. A bus? Why don't you make it a spaceship so you can get to your home planet? You're right. Everybody, come on! Come pick up the bed. Come on, come on, come on, pretty girl. Go out, come, come on. No. and wait today, I think we're going to go up to the moon. So what do you think about that? Do you want to go to the moon? To the moon! To the moon! Let's go. Yeah, to the moon. <laughs> Up here, you still have no weight. Oh. Welcome to the moon, everybody. Now, let's learn a bit more about mass and weight. To prove that air has mass, we're going to bounce balloons. Yes. First, here we are showing you that two of the exact same balloons weigh the same. Now, we're blowing up a balloon. Now we have blown up one of the balloons, as you can see here, and one of them weighs more. Guess which one? The blown up balloon. That's wrong. All right. That's right. This proves that everything in the world and out has mass. And mothballs. Mothballs, as you can see right here, have a density a little bit more than water, than one gram per cubic centimeter, that is. Hmm. But when we put Alka-Seltzer tablet in, so this one's broken, which has carbon dioxide. Nice. So, why is this happening? Well, the carbon dioxide from the tablet is sticking to the mothballs and making them float the way a human does when they put on a life jacket. But, when they reach the surface, the air makes the gas bubbles explode. And since mothballs are denser in water on their own, they sink. But, later on, they catch more bubbles. And this causes them to rise again, as we see here. And so, we have just proven in this experiment that density can be affected by carbon dioxide. We can also demonstrate this by changing the density of the liquid that an object is in. Now, let's do it. Fill a beaker with 500 milliliter of water, then put 10 milliliter of salt in the beaker and steer. The, the dissolving salt changes the density of the water so that it, it is greater than the density of the egg which makes the egg float. Oh, the metal box is very pretty. Shut up, boys, of you silly gooses. These little blocks are examples of what solids are. Solids? <laughs> what are those? Solids are objects with two, um, how do you say, uh, important characteristics. They have uh, uh, a definite shape and value. What the? Action. Ah, uh, never mind. Just show the goose thing. Go. 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 Go.
Mercury is an example of a liquid metal, which is a liquid at room temperature. Liquids have a definite volume, as you can see here. Liquids take the shape of their container. These two have the same amount of volume, but take the shape of their containers. As you know, particles in a solid don't move, but in liquids, they stay close together but move around each other. Another physical property is viscosity. It's the resistance of a liquid to flow, or you would say it's the thickness of a liquid. We will demonstrate this by dropping four equal weights into four different liquids. Ready, set, drop. As you can see, the marble in the shampoo sank the slowest and the marble in the water sank the fastest. Gas is a phase of matter with a higher energy level than liquids. When we add energy to liquid particles, they can become a gas. The boiling water in this flask is vaporizing into gas and condensing on the ice cold dish above it. This simulates how raindrops form. Another way to demonstrate the phase change between a liquid and a gas is by making a cloud in a bottle. In this case, the phase change happens when you squeeze the bottle to add and release pressure. The mysteriously rising water. By boiling the water, it changes from liquid state to gas state. This gas is also formed under the inverted beaker and it places the air under this beaker. As the water boils, the water vapor particles, which are very fast, replace the air particles and take up more space. The particles of water vapor slow down, contract, take up less space. That space left behind is filled by particles of liquid water. This is an example of Charles Law, where volume decreases under constant pressure. Matter can be described by its chemical properties. Of these chemical properties is the ability to conduct electricity. Electricity is the flow of electrons. Electrons are negatively charged. To show that electricity is in all types of matter, we are going to flow electricity through a lemon. When one side of an object has more electrons than the other side, the electrons try to flow to balance the charge. Both the lemon and the wire have the ability to conduct electricity. When we touch the voltage measured to the wire and the paper clip to measure how much electricity flows from the paper clip to the copper. As you see, there are electrons flowing through the lemon from the paper clip to the copper. This is electricity. In this experiment, to investigate chemical versus physical changes, we're going to make a soda powder bomb where we will see the reaction of soda powder on water. To start with, we will need to squash a bottle of water. Then we will pour both the water and the powder and see the reaction to the bottle. As you can see, right now the chemical reaction is taking place in slow motion. As the vinegar is being added to the baking soda, it is expanding and taking up all the room. Now it is a new substance and it has new chemical and physical properties. Chemical properties are properties of an element or compound in chemical reactions. For example, the fact that sodium reacts with water is a chemical property. Physical properties are properties of an element or compound that can be observed without a chemical reaction of the substance. A substance's color and density are physical properties. In a chemical change, the substances are altered chemically and display different physical and chemical properties after the change. In this experiment, to investigate chemical changes, we will put some acid into glucose. That way, we will see the chemical effect it creates. We will see the color, smell, and temperature reactions. As you can see, the color is changing and the temperature is rising. As we stir, the color is darkening. The smell is stronger. Now we can see the temperature rising fast. It is rising very fast. It finally stops in about 64 degrees Celsius. A chemical change is taking place. At the beginning of this experiment, there are two reactants, which were the sugar and the acid. By combining the two, it, we chemically changed them and we made a product. The product was this big black 
blob, whose flammability, color, and temperature were different from the reactants before. Just like 